first three Chronicles are all about this four minutes. They're all roughly the same size. Chronicle 2 is actually the quickest. Slightly smaller than the first one, at least in the... Uh, the main route to the enemy is a little shorter. Battle 1, fight! Chronicle Tutorial and Chronicle 1, Chronicle Tutorial, are the exact same map, although uh, positioning of units is a little different. The main reason it's shorter in Chronicle 1 than in the tutorial is because you have three units to beat down the one building you have to take instead of two. You have less enemies and less incredible enemies, a lot shorter distance to go, so that kind of makes up for the fact that you're taking two strongholds instead of one, but roughly the same. It is kind of interesting that they just copied tutorial uh, Chronicle 1 map for the tutorial. Fight. It's going to be a slightly slow tutorial since they attacked me. That's just what happens. Tutorial enemies are usually super passive. But again, their actions totally completely RNG. I can't really control them. But you only fight a total of four battles. While wow. I hadn't really thought about it much, but you'd fight like five over the course of Chronicle 1. Which is why it is just a little bit shorter instead of a lot shorter. Considering that you have to do... Fifty percent more take fifty percent more time for not to take each stronghold and you're fighting another stronghold. Mathematically look at that, that means that uh our two people hitting do a total of well, actually that one that's only eight anyway, so that makes it even less. But it's ten hits for that and then one fight twenty eight 38. Total of 48 while 1200 is only 25. So almost half as much time taking the strongholds in Chronicle 1. I'm sorry, but I must move on. Didn't get a gold, but uh, surprising that that's shorter than my last run. Of course, my last run was offline. I was slightly distracted. Because I was watching something else at the time, I decided I just wanted to practice the game without offering commentary or anything to distract myself. So... But in the world of multiple screens, I pretty much always have to have something going. I was watching, uh, can't even remember now what was occupying my mind, some of the speedrun or something. Possibly a randomizer race of some sort. That's going to affect a couple of these uh, chronicles towards the various parts, but towards the end of the chronicle where I'm going to leave some text boxes open, or where I did rather in my PB run for this category. I'm going to be running this 
Is it next week? Ooh, good thing I'm practicing. It's actually next week for No Holidays Allowed. Which will be running on the Speed Gaming Live channel. I should uh, know that a little bit more offhand. You're not dead yet? Goodness. Okay, this is going to be terrible, since I let myself be distracted during that fight. Enemies, I guess, is it really the same amount of enemies? It really feels like, uh, well, well, no, that's true, that's right. There's only four here, where there are five in the prologue, and I've forgotten how many I counted. The same or one more, that's why the... No, yeah, I'm trying to figure out why this is less than, uh, isn't even quicker. Well, no, one of the reasons is because of the intro. That's another thing. I start the tutorial right when it goes into the map, but for Chronicle 1, I have to go through the preamble. And I don't do the preamble for the tutorial specifically because otherwise I couldn't customize my characters. It would take way too long. I really don't, uh, that's why my characters is the whole reason behind the speedrun as far as I'm concerned, be behind the speedrun in this game mode and enjoying it. Battle 2, fight! Okay, about 10 seconds there wasn't too terrible, considering uh, how badly I did on that one fight. This just happens to be short enough that with you only do three fights, which is the biggest uh, thing here. This is the fewest number of fights that we actually do in the entire game. So despite working through Decisive battle. two strongholds, the uh, total distance traveled is short enough that it's definitely shorter than Chronicle 1 as well. Chronicle 1's starting positioning is... Uh, Subpar. It is nice that there aren't any strongholds you have to take along the way. Take the way but... You should really give up. It looks like I won today, but who knows what will happen next time. I'm pretty sure that early on I did try taking the left route similar to how I do in the prologue and seeing if less fights through there would be quicker than uh, taking the stronghold than ignoring the stronghold and going right, but ended up being quicker this way regardless. One of the things that I was trying to do last time and that I need to work on a little bit more this time as well, which I always forget about, is when I'm going into a battle and I know that I need to give commands immediately afterward, I should uh, be trying to focus on having a, the RNL 
shoulder buttons ready to send me immediately to the character that I'm going to be ordering so I don't have to hunt for them or scroll rapidly through. If I prep that ahead of time, that can cut a few seconds off here and there. And especially on my regular any percent that I'm still trying to get sub three on, I need to uh, carve out those little inches everywhere I can. This is something I don't always uh, mention. Occasionally I remember it and talk about it, but trying to select units in this game is slightly cumbersome because you can do it by moving the uh, you are strong. by moving the cursor around to find your you unit. Although when they're in a group, it's of kind course, of hard to pick out the specific one, me. but the much faster way is to use the R and L buttons. It will immediately no matter how far you are away on the map, send you to the next character uh, in line. But the problem is that when you're using the cursor and using the RL buttons, they do not uh, interact together. If you're using the R and L buttons, it'll always keep a memory of who you last selected with R and L. Assuming that uh, at the very start of the game, it's default on the first character. So the first time you hit R, it'll go to the second character. The first time you hit L, it will go to the last character. Well, whichever one you do first, then you're on that character. So L, if you do R, then L, that would take you back to the first character, etc. But then if you're moving the cursor around to select somebody else, it doesn't care. It keeps in memory that you uh, last R'd over to character two, whatever. So if I use R to go to character two, then move maneuver over to character one, select character one and then hit L, it takes me back to character one, even though I am actually on character one. It makes logical sense why I do it, and uh, it took, you know, several tries of this to really come up with the idea and figure out that it was good, but it still kind of amuses me that I deliberately changed my character into a slower unit type for this battle and it ends up speeding it up. That would not be the case if ever this had some sort of remaster with better loading times. Something I'm still... You know, big list of uh, wishes from a genie would be Chronicles of the Sword related getting... HD remaster of Soul Calibur 3. Doesn't have to be anything fancy, just something like uh, the Soul Calibur 1 version that they released for more modern systems. You could play it on modern hardware, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, is that the new one? PC, wouldn't matter, just as long as you could play it on one of the newer systems. Have a bit of improved loading times. Wish 2 would be for a Chronicles of the Sword standalone game. A side game to Soul Calibur where they focus specifically on, sure, this world, make it a sequel to the storyline of Chronicles of the Sword would be cool, and then put all the focus into brand new styles for uh, this settings, various weapons, get improved Grieve Edge, improved Lance, you know, those kinds of things. Unique katana style, similar to this one, but even more unique attributes to it kind of thing. And of course, vastly improved. Uh, character creation, similar to Soul Calibur 6's, or better. as it, It's pretty much just been subtle improvements from 4 onward. It's kept even a lot of the same equipment. Uh, kept the same style from there. Ever since Soul Calibur 4, it's had the same five sizes for your characters and what that affects. They've had the same just make your character pick out your weapon style. You can choose anything. Uh various kinds of other side things. They've made the color system more comparable in those ones different from Soul Calibur 3. Even, uh, and the voices too, was uh, all of that. From Soul, the difference between Soul Calibur 3 to Soul Calibur 4 with cr character creation is vastly greater than the difference between 4 and even 6 two games later. They decided that the 4 version was uh, superior. Which, whatever. And then just have an improved version of the combat with lots more missions in the strongholds and 
maybe even the possibility to create your own missions and share them online. That wouldn't be too hard to do, I think. If you have just a couple of templates for a map and then you can post strongholds and select strongholds and change what their missions are and then select a... Uh, Select the victory condition, possibly loss condition. You could make some pretty neat little uh, chronicles there. Make your own levels for a Soul Calibur game. That'd be an interesting twist. Battle one, fight. All right. This should be a relatively neutral Chronicle 3. Didn't have anything uh, fights. I got hit a little bit. Didn't go super fast, but have not yet gone very badly either. Haven't made any major mistakes yet with the controls. Did not forget to order any units the proper amount of spaces, which is another little thing I sometimes forget. Of course, we have to see how the last three battles go. This is the longest chronicle for... Uh, by a decent amount of the first five, actually, when you include the tutorial. Because of the fact that you have to defeat all enemies, that adds so many more fights, and it was even longer before I discovered interesting tricks and such. Okay, two minutes left for the battles and cutscene, that's about right. But being able to avoid most of the fights in the other four of the tutorial, one, two, and four, makes them a little bit shorter. Even four, which is a much bigger map, I end up avoiding all but three fights. So that actually makes it equal uh, to Chronicle 2 in that regard, but it's just a much bigger map which is why it's five and a half minutes instead of four or whatever. One of the uh, abilities of Soul Calibur on the Dancer Sword that I forget often is the fact that it has sometimes turned hits into counters which uh, is hard to see when it happens because of the quick-paced combat of the fighting style. But essentially, it almost means that the weapon practically has a critical hit function, because one of the big things about any move when it lands as a counter hit is going to do more damage, period. So that, uh, in addition to... Well, for the most part, just with Spin to Win, I don't think it has too many effects besides the fact that... Uh, It adds extra damage. Some effects, of course, and counter hits will increase the stun duration, change it to a more dangerous stun or cause knockdown when it wouldn't normally knock down kind of thing. But uh, considering the knockback knockdown combination of the spin, I don't think I've ever seen it. An effect happen. Nice little gold. Okay, that was a very good Chronicle 3. Almost 15 seconds of gain there. That's uh, pretty impressive.
Now we're going to see what Luna does. Luna always charges towards us. For some reason last time, possibly because I delayed a couple of my characters a little bit more. Uh, instead of coming out to meet me, she stayed inside the stronghold, which was slightly annoying because it's a whirlwind. And so that meant that it was a little bit harder to beat her. There might... I have supposition. There's a lot of stuff I say, but since I'm not a... Uh, coder programmer, especially not for PlayStation type games, who tries to delve into the coding and see what happens. Final I don't know for certain that there isn't a little bit of RNG in the uh, really strategy section scripts. There's a possibility that like there is. But, who knows happen next time. but considering the amount of consistency I'm generally able to get when I do things correctly, it seems odd that there's just occasional RNG that goes from that. I still get effectiveness just simply because I'm human. And so I'm pretty sure it's determined by the tiniest fraction of movement and decisions from characters. Good. Luna's coming out. That's good. Since she starts the fight automatically, that saves me a tiniest breadth of time. I did not make certain that uh, my next R would go to her, though which is slightly unfortunate. I might be close enough that it'll latch onto her automatically when I come out, but I don't know that for certain. You're certainly a handful. I shall remember your name, as you are the only one who has provided a worthy challenge. Final battle, fight! <laughs> I'm sorry, but I must move on. Okay, that wasn't super terrible. Who was I on? Yeah, I was on her, so... As I say, I need to get myself used to trying to make the uh, commands go be able to just R click onto the character I want to uh, activate after a battle. It may not save any time to do that, but I just like to be sure. Although when this happens, I think it might save time. I'm choosing that route instead to uh, run around. I might not even have to order away. Maybe I should. This. Okay. Yeah, I had to. Decisive battle. They would have actually gotten to me before I finished that off if I hadn't pulled Adara back. Okay, Arion, super tall character, one of two. Battle one. That's one of the neat things about both this and uh, Soul Calibur 6 is Libra of Souls custom character uh, game mode. Pretty much all the enemies you fight, except for specific instances when they have you fighting the, uh, you know, general Soul Calibur characters available in the game, you'll be fighting characters made with the custom character format. They don't make any kind of weird, you can't build them kinds of special characters. Nice little gold there from a couple of good fights. That worked out snazzily.
I'd have to list this among my least favorite. Uh... I should have moved Kosuke there, but oh well. Least favorite of the Chronicles. Probably went too far there. Not a huge deal. But the more of those little things I cut out, the better we end up. Normally I leave three there because it's a little quicker and all my characters are sword masters, so it doesn't matter. But on this one, where each of my characters are different classes, it I'm not sure what's uh, best to do. I had to really try to work on some sort of experience route if I want to take this super seriously. Right now I'm just practicing for doing it for the mere thought of no holidays allowed. It's been kind of interesting, but uh, so it was neat to offer as a you know new version to show off in the Battle marathon. One, and I was really hoping that uh, I forgetting what uh, my weapon style is. Thought I was Iron Sword for a second. This is nightmare. That's really hilarious that the Nightmare Taunt puts both of those together at once with this, uh, this voice two. line. That's Fight. great. Talk about being passive aggressive. You're not bad. You never stood a chance. That's one of the reasons I like English voices. Hearing the dialogue that comes from uh, the characters fighting just really amuses me, especially from like taunts and things. Now he's hoping to get more I'd have to do another one that was uh, would be another challenge mode, which would be only Soul Calibur characters. But based on the fact that the Soul Calibur character weapons are a lot harder to have dominant styles would be a l even harder version of this to do. It would actually be easier if I were doing something like all enemies 100% style, because then I'd just get enough. It'd be a whole lot longer, but it would give me enough XP that... Uh, Um, what do I want to be on? Yeah, Dernos is actually fine. But anyway, it would give me enough experience that the end game wouldn't be a problem. The biggest problem with this one is that the uh, four sub characters that I use, supporting characters, whatever we call them. While it does give me access to weapon styles that I generally uh, prefer to ones that are really bad that are available during the late to end section of the game, especially when you have to use all of the characters a lot more. They are a lot higher level than the EXP I'll get by just playing this any percent. And that makes a big difference, especially in the final uh, chronicle where The, uh, the little bit of stat boost that sword masters have make Chronicle 20 a lot more consistent on any percent than on any of the others. And even on, uh, it's the it's the reason why I've had a lot more problem with this than I thought, especially compared to the other challenge mode of MCO that I was trying before, is that with all those characters having such, even though I'm not super fond of their skills, uh, at least their stats are high enough and their levels are high enough when I get them that they are able to fight their way through the combats. But with these characters who not only uh, are using wild weapon styles I like, still inferior to the uh, katana style, I also don't have the sword master's stats to fall back on. Final battle fight. And that makes the biggest difference in Chronicle 20. Because even though it doesn't seem like much, those, uh, since you're only doing six, seven, eight, or nine ish points of damage per hit to an enemy and taking one or two more points, 
you would think that it wouldn't make that big a difference having a few stat differences on the characters, but it actually adds up when you have so many hit points and you're doing so many hits in order to reach the uh, points. Let's go ahead and pull him back now. That's probably fine. Because those guys barely make it in, so... But I was saying, I dislike this map simply because I really wish you could do something more efficiently with it. If there's any way to work fast enough on the left side to take it before the enemy takes uh, the main stronghold, that would be ideal. But... I don't know, I wonder if uh, going through that middle section... I ought to try a few things eventually. Play around with it, see if you could cut through, say, the middle. That might actually be shorter than going around the left side. Hard to say, they both wind a little bit. I think the main reason I go left is because enemies come out of the uh, right side, though. That's the part that would hurt me. Five people made it in. I guess I really don't need to worry about pulling that guy away anyway, come to think of it. Um. Battle two, fight. Because a fifth, a sixth one can't even get in here, so what's the point? Either that or I did pull too early and he did manage to make it in in time. Battle three, fight. Goodness gracious. A death ear wouldn't be super duper bad, but it would uh, lose me a little bit of time and be annoying. Especially since I'm already on a really good early pace. Ooh, god, Chinese blade. That was kind of an accident, but it worked out because he decided to uh, sit there and take it for me. Okay, we got this. Maybe. All right. Good chronicle. It works out. Yeah, he didn't join anyway, but since only five can fit into the stronghold, pulling him away. Which actually means it might be faster just to uh, leave whoever it is in there, even let the uh, enemy almost take the uh, stronghold. Save a little bit of time. Not super sad about four seconds. I did have a gold last time, so the fights must have gone exquisitely. I think this is one of the ones where I uh, left windows open too long. Text boxes, keeping the game uh, frozen. Satisfied with this chronicle. It's pretty obvious that there's no superior way to this one. And it's kind of convenient before uh, that you have to defeat all four of the Klesser Pemdo because it means that there's absolutely no way that's faster. There have been, uh, I've had all sorts of interesting comments in the YouTube comments, which I really appreciate from posting these over the years. Uh, there was one person who suggested uh, trying to take one of the sides and keeping out the uh, rest of the Klesser Pemdo, blocking them off so they couldn't reach the final battle. But as I pointed out, that might be the case, but uh, that wouldn't actually help me any. That's where I should have been able to save a little bit of time. Oh, although I had the uh, orders on her anyway to force her, so 
Although I could take advantage of the fact that it would have gone to her anyway if I'd been a little bit smarter about that. Something to uh, think about. But blocking off the rest of the Cluster Pemdo from reaching the main stronghold doesn't do much good when you have to defeat the Cluster Pemdo anyway. It means it would be one of the few times where I take the main stronghold and the mission doesn't end. The Chronicle doesn't end. I have to do it more in it. But just one, fight. taking one. Going along the side would not be a help since there is a uh, small stronghold in the way anyway. So both ways you're taking down two strongholds. That would be a smaller one, but it would be a much longer walk. And then also uh, one of the characters would be stopped from entering the main stronghold. So I'd have to fight them separately anyway. So it wouldn't end up saving anything. I wonder if it would be worth it in any percent if it would end up saving time to gain some levels by sending a character to fight one of these super accessible SC characters just for a little bit of safety. Decisive battle. Because a couple of extra levels might be all that's really necessary in order to uh, make Chronicle 20 uh, more consistent. Battle one, fight. It looks like I won today, but who knows what will happen next time. Good fights here. As long as nothing goes wrong in the uh, main fight, this should, like, horribly, horribly wrong. I should gain back a decent amount of time here, too. Considering that I wasted a minute and a half my PB. If it weren't for load times, it would definitely be worth it to crack out a few extra levels on that. But as I say, it might be worth it anyway. Something to look into, maybe. Or I really just ought to bite the bullet and start doing, at least after, uh, if I want to pursue this more after the marathon, because the marathon is going to be any percent, but if I want to do this uh, challenge mode a little bit more, pursue it a little more uh, consistently, just put a little more effort into it, maybe I should just swap it over to SC percent. Because while some of the fights would be tougher to so do on SC again. percent, it would give me so now. much experience, it would be a lot it's more consistent in the end game, debt. especially Chronicle 20. It's been a while since I've done SC percent because uh, ever since COVID and since I moved, I've been super inconsistent about doing all of my speedruns. I've pretty much done almost nothing with the Gold Box game in two years, even though that's. Uh, the next time RPG Limit Break happens, unless I pull it out, that's going to be an available thing and something I should be doing. And uh, even this i only done off and on in the past year and a half, two years. And so when I have been doing it, I've only been doing any percent variations of it, either MCO, regular, to D-Rest, or this now that I've just started working on. Battle 3, fight! So I need to get back into the, sometime need to get back into the habit of doing SC percent anyway. Doesn't help by the fact that my PB on any percent is sitting at 30120 and I'm staring and salivating at that sub three. It would just feel so good to get sub three on any percent. I don't know that I can really do much better with uh, SC percent. I've actually gotten it very, very consistent and percent as well, but theoretically I should be able to hit that because I've come up with a couple of interesting strats since then that just have never worked out. And yeah, wow, that was a nice gold. Excellent fights.
Okay, we're all at four. I never, never used notes. The closest thing I've ever used to notes was when I was first starting out on most of the gold box games. I have a uh, clue book open that has the maps available so I can track the maps. Although once I get really good at doing one of those speed runs, I just do everything from memory. Uh, I actually did pull up Pool of Radiance and just played it through equivalent of 100% recently to see how I did and it probably took me like an hour 50 minutes I didn't time it or anything it was just doing it for fun but I still remembered almost every map perfectly even though it's been practically two years since I played it okay I almost never used notes. I've never used one for this, but sometimes I think it might be good to have notes to remind me on each chronicle what number I want each character at, because it always, unless I'm very good at remembering, it usually takes me a second to see, let's see, what numbers do I want to start out here? And I have to scan the, oh, I didn't even know who I selected. This is fine. Barbarian is the weakest class, so the Barbarian actually needs experience more than any of the other classes uh, although I'd say the samurai is a close second because the samurai is so very important samurai is still the only character I'm really comfortable beating final boss strife with so if he is low level and things go wrong for him I'm in trouble I might be able to beat him with barbarian but I don't know Fortify up. Perfect. biggest thing about MCO that really makes it consistent is uh, or more consistent than the UWC is Mega coming back in Chronicle 18. So the last three Chronicles I have my Katana Wielder back and he's in the mid 30s, high 30s level, much higher level than I get a uh, Samurai in a normal game so that gives him enough stats to be a big deal. A normal game, just depending on how uh, everything goes, I wind up with uh, my main character somewhere between 45 and 50, my katana wielder who I give most of the rest of the uh, experience to, especially towards the end, I focus a lot on getting him his levels. He gets into the low 30s, and then uh, the rest of my characters are generally just somewhere in the 20s in experience. Which, again, when they're Swordmasters, that doesn't mean a thing. The level 20 Swordmasters have better stats than the level 50 Dancer, so they're in fine shape, but... When I'm using inferior classes, becomes a bit more of an issue. That was funny. One of the great things about the speedrun is just the uh, weird physics in this game. The uh, Soul Calibur 3, maybe it's just because I've played the most hours of it, but I've seen 
crazy physics things happen in Soul Calibur 3 that don't even happen in uh, Soul Calibur 2 and Soul Calibur 1 with running past each other and jumping over each other and attacks missing that you swear shouldn't miss. Of course, part of that is things like ice here. There aren't as many ice effects that you'll meet in, uh, especially in Soul Calibur 2. There are some slippery floor uh, missions in the Weapon Master mode. I believe it's been years since I played Weapon Master. It was interesting, but since I couldn't customize characters to fight in it, I have never really felt the uh, urge to go back to it. And the levels you gain don't really make a uh, difference in stats like they do in this game. Might lose a little bit of time here. I don't think I did anything too wrong. The fights just weren't quite as fast. Depends on how this last one goes, of course. One fight. <laughs> Okay, not a fight I would like, but eh, this won't be too bad. I might even make a little bit of time over my PB. I am not. don't think I'm going to make a gold out of that, but I might. It's pretty close. Not quite a gold, but uh, not too far from it, not as far as I thought it would be. Of course, I've only done this run like five times total. So, or is this only the fourth? Is this the fourth? This is the fourth. Yeah. So it's not that hard to get gold. The reason I've still got so many of them. Okay, three, three, three. With the new way I'm running this route, uh, it's almost going to be the exact same in SC percent, really. Come on, get up already. This fight was decided by fate. One of the weirdest things about the game which never comes up in the speedrun since I always skip through them, but uh, just like in every other Soul Calibur, every time, every character has a certain type of introductory stance they do, flourish, weapon kata, something, you know, uh, and just as... Okay, so that's two characters I'm going to have to reorder. That's unfortunate, but oh well. Not a huge, huge deal. But yeah, there's always some sort of starting stance, starting uh, 
gesture thing that is done. And with created characters, uh, they're besides the ones that are based on weapon style that they do constantly, they're just like they have certain voice lines they do at the end of battle that are determined by whatever class they are. There are a couple of voice of uh, pre-battle stances that they do based on their uh, alignment, as it were, whatever you want to call that voice function. And it doesn't matter their gender, they do the same thing. But at one point, there are actually two for what I call the light cold class, where they have generally a good voice, a good attitude, but they're cautious and more reserved and not excited about combat. The uh, truly pacifistic style, if you wanted to give it a word, it would be pacifistic style. Then you have energetic, you have vicious, and then you have truly cold for your evil, cool version. Is he going to come out? Yep. Okay. But uh, for the pacifistic side, the first when you start a new game and you're doing your first couple of playthroughs, if you have a pacifistic character, the uh, special alignment-based opening stance they do is to cross their right hand across their chest and give a little bit of that Soul Calibur electrical power-up to the hand. But then, after you've played a couple of times, for some reason, it permanently switches over to a uh, little motion where they've got both hands and their weapon tucked up uh, by their head. Uh, which doesn't look nearly as cool as charging a Soul Calibur effect on your hand. I don't know why that is. One of the little things in the game that bothers me. Haven't thought about it very much uh, in the past several years because uh, again I've uh, mostly been speed running and I always skip through those intro scenes so you never see them so it never comes up that is a small matter let's see so We've killed all but two, so we've had a number of different fights, though. So, but no, I think it's a number of characters dying. So if we manage to beat Cannon dying, which I'm not sure if we will or not, this one always is, just seems to be one of the weird ones. We won't get the speech until after we've won the Chronicle. Knight still hasn't seen action at all. I think I'm going to have to start the knight out against uh, Luna's forces in the next Chronicle, which is slightly unfortunate. Decisive 
battle. Battle one, fight. Ooh, finally pushed him out. That's nice. It looks like I got lucky. He resists the ring out so often that I sometimes don't expect it at all. I just accept that it's not going to happen. Am I really going to get like a 20 second PB here? Whew, so much dialogue. Not a 20 second, but uh, 15. No, 20. That is 20, actually. It's 23. Wow. 23 second gold. Not bad. Okay, now I have to beat a 10 minute here, which is rough. Two, two, two. Knowing exactly what I'm doing with the characters here helps out. The area covered by some moves is really odd. There are a lot of uh, even horizontal attacks that I can sidestep with that uh, moving great wall move, the running AB. But then there are a lot that I can't. Which, since they are horizontal, they should be doing a wider area, probably at least 120 degrees. But some of them, like, literally start straight forward and then go 90 degrees to the left or some such. Minus guard, yeah, that's right, so it doesn't matter. Okay, why did that happen? This has not happened in quite a long time. Not that it's really a huge deal. It might even save a little bit of time, but it's just odd. I Battle don't think I've one. done anything different Fight. this time, which is, which is well, good life restore from Soul Edge, so. Unfortunately, this isn't the fastest, so six uh, battles with this style is going to. Should have made his cape red, too, actually. Went for a blue Grand All Force this two. time. Just, swing things up a bit because I often go red because it's the primary Grandal color as well as my favorite color. I decided to do blue this time. With red as the sub color. I really like red and blue together anyway. There's a reason Superman and Spider-Man both have red and blue costumes. Less power of Soul Edge and how knights aren't too bad even on uh, offense with being so low level and yet uh, doing decent damage with this attack. 
Come on. Oh, come on. Okay, not the fastest fight there, but I did take care of all six of them and got a lot of experience for the night, which is good. Yeah, pulled away one of the ones that she would have fought, which is mixed. Not a huge, huge deal. It all uh, comes out in the end because it doesn't increase the number of loading screens I would get. Just odd. Battle one, fight. <laughs> Two, fight! <laughs> Good going, Assassin. Yeah, I don't want to do anything with her. What am I thinking? Um, yes, I can speed this up now. This will be a little bit uh, slow, I think, compared to previous. But considering I'm two and a half minutes ahead, I can afford to give up a minute or two here. 
at least I can afford to give up a minute. Battle one, fight. When I submitted this, my two runs that I had done were of this particular category were like 335 and 320. So I put a 320, 330 estimate saying, I don't know, things could go very wrong, but they shouldn't go as wrong as they had before. Since I uh, at least have a bit of experience with it now, know things a little better. I didn't want to bank on being able to master this and not being able to, so. But uh, from the last run and how this run is going, at least so far, because really the, I shouldn't be counting my chickens because the big time losses are in the last few Chronicles. Battle four, fight. But if this gets anywhere close to the 310, I'm hoping it'll reach. I can't block it. I need to stop trying. If it gets anywhere close to that, I love that auto guard. Glad he did that actually, because that would have extended the time that I was in there and made me waste more time if I hadn't, uh, if he hadn't guarded that. That's because uh, that's a weapon property. It blocks guards, sometimes blocks counters, I think, and blocks uh, falling out of the ring. So one of the reasons why you can't just grapple, try to deal with Heil by grappling him, he'll. Uh, escape most of your throws, if not from the computer being able to any time it wants to the weapon choosing to do so any time it wants. Lost a little more than a minute, that's sad. There's a lot of uh, variance in that chronicle, though, largely from the number of battles. Now, this did not go super great on the uh, PB either. It's been one of the tougher ones recently for various reasons. Something always goes wrong. And one of the big things that went wrong was that uh, the uh, assassin, Oryx, that's his name, Oryx on the left decided to fall back and uh, defend rather than charging forward as he usually does. I did manage to get the uh, knight over here, whatever her name is, to go forward instead. Oryx. But uh, I still had to fight one extra battle I didn't want to fight, which did mean more experience. But... All right, he's running forward. Let's run her back. And that'll give us a bunch of uh, free time here. Less experience again. This time I ran him all the way to that side this instead of charging down the uh, going heading towards the middle. That's an interesting twist. I think what I did was not go quite far enough forward last time. So I deliberately went forward farther, but uh, that seemed to work. Cur, like you dares to take on this country, this king. Battle one, fight! <laughs> Enough already. Battle 
Battle 2, fight! Yeah, I know what I need to do for consistency rather than worrying about not having enough experience. this category the uh, very dangerous assassin i ought to just start a combat with battle 1 fight <laughs> Two, fight! Kunai has always been one of my favorite weapon styles to play ever since I first started and with uh, the help of my sister who designed my original starting character, decided to use a ninja of the starting six I figured was the uh, most interesting sounding class. First I wasn't pleased with the uh, kunai being the weapon for the ninja because I've never been very good with Taki and the kunai seem like an obvious copy of Taki, which uh, surprisingly not as much as you would figure. You are really being a pest. There we go. Not usual for her to be much of a problem. She wasn't doing a whole lot of damage because I think she was only a sage class anyway. Maybe even just a saint didn't uh, really pay attention. Ooh, nice. That still save a little bit of time. And it looks like, although I've always wondered about it, it does seem that I'm getting some offense down from them. Do you see now? You never stood a chance. Ah! Ah! 
Okay, let's go ahead and go Knight next. Give him some XP. Um, actually, Barbarian needs it more. Barbarian is who we'll do next. He needs it most. Then if this gets Barbarian to anywhere close to level 10, we'll have the Knight take on Kierkegaard. Okay, this is Barbarian, not Knight. I need to do 8-way run, 8 or 2 triangle. You really want to do Battle 1. Fight. Oh my word. So passive aggressive. It's interesting how certain voice lines don't uh, match up well with the taunts. In later versions, they uh, made most of the taunts a little bit more balanced in the time they take. So you, you, they always use the same line for every taunt instead of having two different taunt lines instead of a short one and a long one and how well they work depends on just how long it takes them to say the line and everything else. Oh, jeez, come on. Ah! <sighs> Big save. Take good care of yourself. Okay, well, no more from Barbarian for this battle. Nice to get uh, those four important levels. But uh, not going to take on Kierkegaard with that uh, low of health. We'll have the knight take on Kierkegaard for a bit of a boost. Despite the low hit points, assassins have a surprisingly good defense. They are one of the highest rated classes. The only stat that they have that's really low is their hit points, but it's a very interesting uh, relationship between hit points and vitality in this game. I can't believe you just let me do that. And not only was uh, perfectly painless, it made that fight go really, really quick. I'm certainly not going to lose time on this uh, on this split this time. Should have been ready for that since he started the fight early. I could have made sure I was on, which I was actually. I was on Adara. I could have just art over if I'd remember. Just need to remember that. Normally three minutes for the final stronghold battle wouldn't be that much time, but there is the 20-ish minute cutscene with Chester we have to do first. I kind of, I don't like the fact that they have Chester's name, question mark, question mark, question mark, in Chronicle 2. Chronicle 3, actually, the first time you fight him, because it makes it uh, ambiguous that he's this guy. 
I guess that they until you fight him right here, it doesn't call him Chester anyway. So, but it's because this outfit changes so much, it's not natural to automatically recognize him the first time you're playing. All right, all right. <laughs> Surprised? Well, it's just as you see. I must protect One of the reasons I knew was that I had uh, this brilliant plan of pitting Grandall and Dalkia against one another and then rise to power during I have the, the strategy guide. Chaos. I always get strategy but guides for because of your console games. Medway, often for computer games too, back when those were a thing. You will pay Even if they oftentimes have false this. information and stuff, they're just maybe what they figure out. They have a lot of good information and make it pretty easy to avoid missing things. You didn't really need it, but just thought that because it, it's a fighting game, what do you really need to know? But it did provide a lot of useful information, so I'm glad that I got it. Uh, and one of the things it made pretty obvious was that this is Chester and question mark, question mark, question mark is Chester and... Uh, evident to see when you look, same hairstyle, same color, scar on the face, the most important identifying, same face. Although it looks slightly different the first time around. Maybe it's just the distance away and you get the zoom up of his face in that cutscene. That's, I think, what it really is. It's, uh, it really is the same, I just don't think about it much. Yay, nice little gold, that's another minute and a half, that's good. Okay, let's hope the Cluster Pemdo plays nice today. That was five. If they play very nice, I might be able to get a sub 130 Chronicle 11, which would be uh, very, very nice. Battle one, fight. <laughs> Battle one, fight. <laughs> Okay, not too bad. I'm sorry, but I must move on. Not the best fight. Heal though usually isn't too bad, but uh, anytime I can escape ice without losing more than like half my health, I feel pretty good. There's a little bit of a slip up there, and Heal Doe is slightly more aggressive than she needed to be, but. Yes, 
decisive battle. One of the things that this has led me to be excited for is that the uh, surprisingly best weapon I've found to use against Gerardo seems to be the kunai. It's the only time I've ever defeated uh, Gerardo in one with one character in Chronicle 15 is with uh, what's my first or second run? I can't even remember now, but it was in this category and it was crazy. I think it was the first one. It was just wild that I managed to beat him with uh, only one character and it was the kunai user because the somersault happens to uh, work very well for chipping off large portions of his health and uh, he oftentimes swings over it. Plus it has uh, its decent defense for the uh, Assassin combined with the fact that Shutenso regenerates life on its own and increases defense as well Because uh, that's not to be underestimated. It is a defense increasing weapon. Oh crap um, whew, Just in time. I almost wasted uh, some decent time by having my main character auto die But uh, that bonus defense plus the health plus the low HP actually means that the defense goes farther because I regenerate a larger portion of my health back. Three, two, one, Don't do that twice in a row. That's just wrong. Stop grappling. Worst possible thing you can do. I just never can escape grapples either. I don't know why, but uh, I just, it, I've never been able to learn how to just try to hit the uh, right button in time. Okay. It works very well on them. It just does pull that flip attack from the kunai. Since I... Although I've said the, for the longest time I said and kind of did believe that the person chosen for uh, Gerardo in Chronicle 15 rather than your main character leading is whoever is weakest. Uh, I said it was random for a while, but actually I've come to find out and learn from my experience that it actually turns out that I'm pretty certain it's the weakest character. It's been pretty consistent. The, either the one who is hurt, or the one who is... Uh, if any of them are hurt, it's whoever's hurt the most, or the one who's lowest level, if they all are fine. Maybe it's actually based on hit points, but I don't think so, because I think there's times where uh, I've managed to make it mostly totally health intact, and it wasn't the uh, lower hit point character, though it's hard to say, because most of the time whoever's lowest level is going to be the weakest character, period. Uh, going to be the, the lowest HP character is going to be the lowest level, because all my characters are the same. But, uh, that certainly isn't the case, though, because they usually have more hit points than my main character does, and main character is always last. Maybe it's just main character's last regardless of being weaker, but... So you've come. This time, it will not be like our previous encounters. See if you can defeat this sword. Battle one, fight. She actually sidestepped my attack. Yeah, about regular for this. 
Not good enough to be gold, but a little bit better than on my PB. Just the fights went slightly better. One second, yes. After it all saved one second, but that's fine. Didn't quite get the uh, sub-130 because of that, but pretty good uh, thing anyway. Okay, um, you need one, everybody else needs four. Battle. Do three usually come? Did I once again throw this off by doing my characters in a separate order? I chose this particular order because I realized that with character number two there, by starting with number one and going backwards through five, the last character would be. So it'd just be easier battle to do four in a row fight. and then switch. Just slightly better mentally. But I don't think that's how I usually do it. I've usually a slave to just pressing R to reach the next, so dip them. Battle two. Yeah, if Fight. that's the case, this is actually uh, convenient because it might mean that I can save a little bit of loading time. Yeah, I think my lowest level is still the knight. Oh yeah, three coming this way again. Interesting, so that means that uh, I definitely will have enough people not attacking my main stronghold that I can wait and do them all at once. Which is handy. Or, actually... I think it, that's a very slow night, so I think I could save even more time by being stupidly aggressive. Battle one, fight. Oh, I'm barbarian. Doesn't help that I decided to turn my barbarian aesthetically into a knight this time around, so. Since they both wield Soul Edge, even though they're different weapon styles, I get confused about which one I'm on. You're not bad. You never stood a chance. Welcome, Raceland Mania. Fight. Sounds like a Dragon Lance fan with a name like that. Okay, we're fine. Final battle, fight!
All right. I must go. Excuse me. <laughs> if you want to credit that. All right, let's have some fun. Come on. I get away with ignoring that guy entirely. I don't know. I think it's worth a shot. Battle one, fight. Or maybe I shouldn't risk it. Just go for the experience, which I also need. a little bit annoying when I ring out right before they reach half health, so I still have to finish them. Especially with the dancer, but... Uh... Anyway, always better to ring out than to not ring out, though. Well, except sometimes with the dancer. Final battle, fight! This time, I am the victor. Okay. Who is lowest level now? I'd rather get Michiko the experience, honestly. Assassin, despite being my fifth slot, is actually slightly more useful than the knight in slot four, and actually being in slot five makes her useful all on its own. Final battle, fight! <laughs> Final 
You can't stop me. Doesn't matter, she's gonna be in combat. I'll have to reorder her. The rest of you can now go to the end. Ouch, she was taking some damage. Agility affects how uh, quickly you move around the battlefield. It is definitely the least important stat because the difference isn't that great. Uh, for the most part, at least uh, with the general kinds of, especially a speedrun style, the more time you're running around, the less you're attacking, and so it's generally not good. But if you're good at manipulating enemies and you're playing casually, it can be useful. But I would say it's definitely the least important of the four stats. Which is one of the reasons why the Dancer is uh, outside of the ability I have to beat everything with Changhua Spin to win a very bad class because its only respectable stat is actually agility. So Assassins have the best agility, but they actually have better, they have really, really good attack as well and better defense than you'd think for as fragile as they are. Which is nice. It's one of the things that's slightly unfortunate about my speedrun strat as well is that uh, being bandits actually does affect uh, in battle stats to a small degree, not hugely, but it does make their the your attack vitality goes down slightly in combat when you're a bandit, and your uh, agility actually goes up. So you're fast characters even faster as bandits but I really don't want that but it's just they save so much time on the actual battlefield taking out uh, castles and the strongholds that uh... there nice Finally been having a pretty nice run up to this point. No deaths except for one almost uh, unavoidable death to AG in Chronicle 11. I've had a couple of close calls, but so far even these uh, inferior characters have managed to come through so far. The places where I've really uh, been roughed up in this run so far though is Chronicle 16 and 18. Those are the ones to watch out for. Chronicle 20 to a degree as well, although it's mostly just because of not having good stats. It wasn't, uh, I played badly or made mistakes or just had bad luck from aggressive computers overwhelming me. Whoops. I have a slow but safe option for dealing with that though. So, you've come. Worthless servant of strife, you shall pay with your blood. For daring to defy me! Battle one, fight! <laughs> Most pathetic boss in the game. It looks like I won today, but who knows what'll happen next time. Whatever class she is, it's a bad class. Not great stats. Not a really, really good weapon. Not a good mission to make her uh, more dangerous. Not a good AI. On all the last Dalkian soldier you fight, the queen is... Uh, not well remembered except for the ever-present quote that always appears. 
5k, not bad. This is one of the weirder maps in the game with this little tail off into nowhere that's just mostly a repository for uh, two Soul Calibur characters to fight, Shanghua and Keelik. I'm not sure, because I don't spend a lot of time meditating upon the maps, but I think it might be the only out-of-the-way dead end in the actual game. Every other place where there are wide, out-of-the-way pathways to take with strongholds and such, they do eventually loop around into the center path somehow. I do know, regardless of the... Uh, I'm pretty sure that's the case. It's been a while since I've done 100% where I had to worry about taking all strongholds, but I know that even in SC% percent, it's the only time I have to send a couple of characters off on a side path and then have them take a long road back around in the middle. There are a few offshoots to single strongholds that are one away, similar to the uh, main stronghold here, where you might have a character or two uh, couched away, but again, for a long path through multiple strongholds, that's a very unique little path there. Final battle, fight! You should really give up! I'm sorry, but I must move on. Alright, now we only have the most horrible fight in the Chronicle left. Not one of the worst fights in the game, but top 10, maybe just top 20 most annoying. Wooden Hill, luckily, is not super high level or powerful. 
just having the highest level separate mission in the game, the most powerful separate mission. Pushing away from a weapon designed to use long range and making the spin to win combo not work so well is uh, frustrating to deal with. Be very, very interesting to see a remaster of this game uh, with better load times and how that would affect the speed run. Because one of the biggest things I've learned to avoid is uh, multiple combats more than anything. It took me a while to figure this out because I usually go north because there's only one stronghold, but even as long as it takes to take down the strongholds because they're smaller and you only fight one enemy instead of two, it is faster take the southern route instead of the northern one. Not a huge, huge difference either. It's like 10, 15 seconds, which uh, is the kind of error that can be overcome through just uh, a good fight or whatever, but uh, definitely consistently lower going on the southern route. Of course, since fights are the biggest source of RNG as well, if the enemy is aggressive or not, lowering the number of fights not only reduces load times, it reduces potential time loss from a fight just going pear-shaped for whatever reason. I'm not sure how many characters they made for the Chronicle that might have some sort of Norse uh, or Battle any sort of one. mythological uh, mythological inspiration, but Brunhild is quite obviously based on the uh, Viking from Norse German uh, mythology and tales. I believe it's the tale of Siegfried, which Siegfried's name also comes from the same uh, epic. Never studied the epic myself, but just heard about it a lot because it is used very commonly by Japanese in anime and video games. They love to grab uh, his mythological sources from all throughout the Western world. Brunhild or Brynhild, depending on how exactly they translate it, comes up a lot. Nice little gold there. Good fights. So many good fights today. Just everything's been pretty good. All right. Now let's see how this one fares. Battle one, fight. You should really give up. I'm sorry, but I must move on. Okay, 
send the knight out first. Then have Kosuke kill them for the experience once they all arrive. These characters are actually so low stat and weak, it doesn't matter that much, but feel safest to give the, uh... well, actually, no, that was the uh, main character who took a small hit, probably. Couldn't quite see the life bars enough. But best to have a character who both doesn't matter and has the stats to sustain be the one taking all those hits. In a world where uh, battle load times were much, much smaller, I wouldn't have to wait for all these five to gather. Just punch them down one at a time. Battle three, fight! Answers. <laughs> A lot of people love Astaroth. It does have a lot of high damage moves and easy ring outs. I've just never been able to get it to work for me. Not reliably. This fight was decided by fate. I found Nightmare Sidestep is a little bit uh, better for exploiting AI, in my case. Since I only get one class, that's my one Barbarian, is uh, Nightmare. Come on. I might try it out sometime, see what I can do with it. Because even now I'm discovering a few moves on other uh, styles that I didn't normally uh, play around with much that were better than I thought. And the Astroth is one of the ones I've used the very least. I've never been a big fan of Astroth's weapon, but it might be worth looking into, but it would have to be pretty good to, uh, to beat out Soul of Nightmares sidestep because that's still the second best soul of character abusable move I've seen. But definitely worth trying out. If it is, it would make me even more sad that Nightmare isn't a knight class himself. Something I often rave about. I, For the most part, I understand the classes assigned, the weapon styles assigned to the classes. They make a certain, definitely a certain amount of sense, but uh, there's just a particular way that I would chain some of the uh, chain move, some of the styles that makes more sense to me. I'd move Rock into the other spot for Barbarian and move Nightmare out into Knight in place of Raphael, move Raphael to Pirate in place of Ivy. Ivy is more a sage by her style, and her weapon is pretty mystical, so move that out of Pirate into Sage in place of probably Cassandra and move her into the empty uh, Gladiator spot. 
which would work doubly well since Sword and Shield is the default weapon of Gladiator, but none of the other Sword and Shield styles are available to Gladiator. Of course, that would mean, uh, on the other hand, because uh, I always look at everything from every angle I can, that would mean that Barbarian, which normally has Iron Sword as its uh, base weapon, would not have either of the styles based on Iron Sword available to it. But, you know, you can't, uh, with only two styles and with the weird way that they did everything, you can't make everything perfect. But it just make more logical sense to me and make a lot of things work better. Okay, three, three, three. Five stays there. Let's go all the way to the end. Not doing that efficiently, but oh well. Um, yeah, he should get here before uh, I take that strong. Hit. Almost sub two chronicle fourteen. This run is going. This run's quite frankly going better than a run I've had in about two years, which is more to do with the fewer times that I've done the speed run in two years more than uh, that much of a thing on just how really great, how badly it's been going for me, but... Do you see now? You never stood a chance. One, fight! Okay, that's a lot of hit points. That's very good. And she's up to level 20 now. That's very, very good. If she is the first person to fight Gerardo, this should be a pretty good Gerardo fight.
I played around with a few different weapon styles, trying to find something that would work well against Guardian Force. Mostly trying to do ones that had accessible uh, attack throws, because those are the only things that will actually work against Guardian Force protected enemies. Uh, even the Sickle, which has probably the most reliable one, though, just didn't do enough damage reliably and wasn't uh, just wasn't reliable enough to be worth the time switch. But as it turns out, the first time and only time I've ever beaten Gerardo with a single character was using a Kunai character the first time I attempted this special challenge category. Which is partially due to luck, but partially the kunai does consistently seem to do a lot of damage to Gerardo and avoid a lot of his attacks with just that little stupid front flip, back flip. If I can, if, if it does work that consistently, and I prove that by playing this a few more times and going through that, it would actually uh, be worth it to... take a good guess at which character should be starting with Gerardo and swap to that character, uh, swap that character to Kunai for this fight. It would make the time investment worth it. So you've come. Third character to say, so you've come. Part of it is due to the fact that Shutenso is a very good weapon, good defense, good attack, and it slowly restores health, so... That increasing defense makes a big deal in making it so that I don't take as much damage from him as many of the other classes. It's slow, but that means that I'm regenerating a lot of health. Got him. Got him. One character, one kill. Now the longest cutscene in the game. You are strong, but you do not yet know where to direct that. Kunai works. Just the combination of Shutenso's particular traits, especially that defense and life regen, plus the fact that uh, Gerardo whiffs a lot at the flip or it uh, causes multiple little chip hits makes it actually very effective you must learn to control that strength yourself otherwise you will never become a true warrior <laughs> the delay on that uh, death scream is pretty crazy But he doesn't actually make a sound. Just, ah, then he makes the sound. Now I'm going to do something I don't normally do because uh, this high level assassin with the kunai is probably a more reliable character for this 
most difficult and annoying. Chronicle 16. We've discussed the reasoning for it probably being the fact that we've abandoned the regular Grand Ole Army, so only a uh, most Abelia took most of it back with her, so it's only our special force of uh, most devoted followers left in our ramshackle new Such rebel army that we've suddenly uh, conjured up. But even if that is, you know, the reason a gameplay and story integration attempt to reduce us to three characters for this chronicle, it is just so horrid, both casually and in a speedrun, having only one. three characters. Right. Makes everything more difficult than it should be and slows everything way down. Battle two, fight. You should really give up. Battle three, fight. I usually dodge that swing. That, uh, moving grand wall. You're not dead yet? Okay, now you're dead. That's at least twice this run I've gone into taunt early because I thought the enemy was dead and they weren't. But it hasn't super punished me either time. That's where I lost a little bit of time at the beginning of the run. But it was only like 10, 15 seconds. Nothing super bad. That one was barely any time at all. When I eventually decide to get back into some sort of SC percent category, that'll be fun. I always enjoy taking down Zoss LML. Okay, that's the easy fights. Now I'm everyone sorry, from here is a teeth mind. clencher. Battle. 
battle one. Fight! I'm sorry! That's a time loss on this one already. 16 is so bad. Battle three, fight. This fight was decided by fate. Actually, you need to stay. That gets rid of one difficult enemy, so I don't have to fight them. Final battle, fight! Okay. This fight was decided by fate. Got him some pretty solid XP. If he gets somewhere into the uh, 30s before we're done, he's pretty reliable for taking down the final boss at least. Cavalry your cavalry, no matter what class you are, how powerful your character is, level, whatever, only does uh, three points of damage to buildings. But these stupid Grand All Elite have better stats in every way, both on field and in actual combat. Cavalry is doing four, the same as an infantry. Uh-oh. Even so, one cavalry will never be able to get through enough buildings to reach me. Especially since I had to build it up to three to recover uh, Mikani. Battle 
one, fight! Oh, thank you for cooperating. Oh, you're still not dead again? Wouldn't have hit her with the third hit any last hit anyway, because she didn't get up but forward, but worst part about separate is that it pushes the enemy away so that they uh won't uh, generally get hit by my combo unless I have them up against the wall or the edge. And they get backwards, uh, get up backwards or to the side, and they just totally miss the combo. Ah, nice, nice, nice. Okay. That will actually, uh, because those fights went well, I actually am not going to lose very much time on this uh, Chronicle. The last fight is just about the least imposing fight of the entire Chronicle. kind of funny how many of the Chronicles have a final boss like that where I'm more scared of many of the enemies or certain ones that I fight or sometimes even all of them and the final boss of the Chronicle is the Breather. seems long for one fight I might actually uh, make up some time on this fight anyhow which kind of goes to show how bad my uh, UWC Chronicle 16s have gone that even after suffering a death for the main character I still have a very good chance of golding going into the final fight golding new verb decisive battle One, fight! <laughs> And easy as usual. It was a decent match. If he's aggressive, he can be a problem because he is a samurai with really high attacks, so it doesn't take him very long to shred through my character if he just does the AI thing of totally preempting all of my moves. But with only guard break, if I knock him down first and get the combo on him, he's as good as done. Okay, only four battles in this one, but they're all tough. Two level 60s, a boss. That was a slip up, easily corrected.
decisive battle. Two, battle, one, fight! Come on! Seventeen usually isn't too bad, but sometimes it turns into this. Mega doing that much damage to me puts me in definitely a more dangerous spot for the other two, even three. Usually the main boss uh, is really easy and... <laughs> yeah, money, money, money. Sadly, doesn't matter since my money is maxed out and there's literally nothing else I can spend money on except fortifying, and the cost of fortifying is so cheap. Even if I conquered and fortified every stronghold and every single thing, I'd make back more than that money off of every fight. Why am I going all the way? I can't do that. Okay, now time to hope that Tira doesn't one-shot me. One time in... Any percent speedruns, we fight Soul Calibur characters because this path just happens to be the shortest, quickest way to get to the end. We could theoretically go through two strongholds up top as well. Decisive but considering battle. the location of all of the uh, generic guys who move around, they almost certainly would fall into those places and make me fight larger numbers of enemies. So it just turns out that on any category that isn't 100% style. Y'all saw that coming. Sometimes pulling away sets up their AI so they're more hesitant, but not this time. Battle two, fight. Goodness gracious. Two down. Golly. Well, good thing I have a uh, such a big thing. This isn't anywhere close to putting my PB in danger. Just putting a sub 310, which would have been really exciting in danger. Assassin is definitely the most disappointing talking class. With uh, instead of having some sort of rather excellent, my mission is complete style like the ninja use, they just give out a ki front for their victory line. Very disappointing. It's a minor thing, but the uh, the voice lines mean a big mean a great deal to me. Okay, so it actually is going to be barely worth it to build this up to uh, cover those two.
11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Decisive battle. All right, Aeolus, the second really tall character. Let's see if he's going to decide to be a superhero. And the answer is no, he is as bad as he usually is, which is what we like to see. Cost me about two minutes, that's about right. Very, very rough losing two characters there. Still on a really good pace, though. Yeah, he's a very interesting character. You are two, and you guys are all three. Not quite working out as it usually does. What did I do wrong this time? Okay, no, they are going. All right, all is as it should be. Nice three levels there for the night.
Okay, this is probably Notice and Baldwin. Baldwin is level three. In the PAL version, he's actually uh, level 38 or something, which uh, would be appropriate for a uh, Udar. And he's done the most damage to me. Hilarious. Which is more appropriate for the time, but uh, I think in the English, they messed up his script or programming his level because they wanted him to be a uh, Abelia character in the original Abelia mission, Chronicle 1, before deciding against it and messed up uh, restoring his level to high level for this one because he was never used there. Okay, survive. That's what's important. Battle one, fight. Now, it's over. Battle two, fight. Now, 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 I'm sorry, but I must move on. Why are you not attacking? Thought I signed everything. This is good Battle. Let's see, 250. Hmm. 
roughly average. I might lose a little bit of time here. I will not lose against a traitor, even if it is you. Battle one, fight! Yeah, quiet down! Quiet down! Quiet down! Now I'll gain some time here. Three, this is fine. Fight. Uh, why they let me? Oh, you stupid fight. fool. Well, a few times that my joke would have worked. Fight. Do some damage to me or it's not going to work. Do some more. Okay, good enough. always funny to see in speed runs where you die to move faster death warps and death saves and this is one of the few only times that uh, I ever get to use it in my speed runs since the objective is not to conquer this stronghold but just to kill Abelia and rather than fight through three other characters who all have that darn guardian force it's just quicker and easier to Sacrifice your party. <laughs> Up with a five second gold there. Not bad. Okay, in the home stretch, just two to go. Five. Not the fastest, but oh well. Big Empty Space Chronicle. For as many strongholds as there are in this chronicle, there are an awful lot of empty ones. And we've managed to avoid fights with a couple. You have your one super boss over here in End. He never does anything. He's there to fight if you want some extra XP, you want to show off a bonus fight or whatever. You just want to try and complete everything. Nightmare locked away down here. Most disappointing Soul Calibur character. Nightmare would be fine as the final boss among the Soul Calibur characters if he wasn't a weak barbarian and if he didn't uh, have a really weak poison stronghold holding him back. These two will come out, we'll fight these two, fight these four and the boss, but all the ones down here, I'm going to be able to avoid fighting as well. So that's like six characters I don't end up fighting on any percent. 
Also, Kurosafalit, a wonderful bit of English. Best, uh, best mission name there, and you never fight anybody in that. Battle one, fight. Wonderful start. Wonderful start. Okay. died in this chronicle in quite a while. But I'm about to. You should really give up. It looks like I got lucky. I have a chance still of making it through here without dying. It's been a while since anybody's brought me that low, so that doesn't feel good, but. None of these characters are super duper bad. He knows, yeah, you're the one I'm gonna wanna do that. So that's fine. You come down here. Once there were four, now there's only three, because one always retreats into the stronghold. Forty-three hit points, yikes. That's like one hit away from a... If it's a solid enough hit and a powerful enough guy. Now, what would be really embarrassing would be if I uh, end up beating that boss Final and surviving battle. only to Fight. lose to the... Only to lose to the generics uh, sitting in the road afterwards. Okay, that was easy. Picked him up three levels, real nice. Battle one, fight. <laughs> Fight! 
Almost wish I didn't ring her out. Ah, darn. There it came. Because if I hadn't have hit her with the ring out, I would have kept the uh, combo going. Long time since I've died here. It'll be interesting to see how that changes. What do I do? Um, luckily, this will stay three, so I don't have to worry about much. How did that hit? Okay, that gave her enough points. So that decides what I'm going to do next. Uh, Knight will continue his attack, the Aranen. I'll have him deal with those three and be the plug. Get some XP. Little bit of a waste of time, but whatever. Just makes me feel a bit better. Why is he already this far up? Because my main character died? That's unfortunate. That could be bad. We'll see. Okay, should be fine. Looks like he's moving up, up. Battle one, fight. <laughs> Okay, up to 21. So all my characters are at least level 20 now, which feels a bit better. Okay, the samurai is a little low, though. And rarely, Mikani is going to get the experience for the uh, final boss rather than Kosuke. Dancer rather than samurai, I should say, because I don't keep the names the same every time. I reuse a lot of them, but... Not every one all the time. She's only 47, so it's not like that's super terrible, but maybe it'd be worth it to pull her away, actually, right before the fight, so that I feed it to Kosuke instead. Having him higher level is much more advantageous going into the final Chronicle.
decisive battle. Somebody once asked if I ever thought of doing a speed run without the main character using only uh, the other character slots. And I've said no thank you, largely because of reasons like that. Since your main character is default the uh, one who fights in almost all of the uh, attacking stronghold fights, because it always goes to the first in line and your main character is always the first in line, that would mean I'd have to either pull them back every single time and make sure I never lose so the main character has no chance of fighting. Or I'd have to do some sort of crazy, uh, or I'd just have to keep the main character back in the main stronghold. Or somewhere tucked in a corner where the enemy will never reach them and only do the, do many of the chronicles with only 67% or 75% of my usual, uh, workforce it wouldn't really change anything really because i'd still just make my secondary character the dancer instead and have the rest be sword masters it's, there's just no real point in doing that in a game like this This is a little thing I always underestimate, actually. That uh, very slight positioning difference by adding from the ground from the bottom up instead of from up down. I ought to see if that makes a difference in who ends up where. All the experience goes to whoever beat the guy. And I think it awards the same amount of experience as it would if you beat them in uh, regular Soul Calibur combat. So it's semi-random. Gernos got two level ups. Well, he's uh, it's useful enough. Lowest level characters are getting the level ups, which isn't bad. Kosuke taking the hits is not good. But I might be able to restore him. Not enough to level up from that kill. Oh, wow. Very interesting. I was a little worried about something like that happening in the uh, next one, but not in this one. On the next fight, I mean. I guess I just didn't get quite enough EXP on Mikani because of that uh, 
loss there right at the end. Not a huge deal. I also had to redo it uh, because of dying like that in the previous run I did, so. I also actually have less, because it went so well, I have less XP, and that's what I've been mentioning several times. This, uh, in normal runs, because of Swordmaster stats, my EXP, my stats are fine, so I can reliably just walk through all the guys without having to worry about anything. In uh, SC percent, I get enough experience regardless of what I'm doing that I have enough there. Even in MCO, I have enough high level characters, higher level than you'd have in a normal run because you can use the NPCs that are there. It all works out. I wonder if it would be, uh, for this final fight, be worthwhile to actually pull in the uh, characters that are there, though that would kind of defeat the purpose if I use Mega, so probably not a good thing to do here. It's specifically designed to use these five, so. But because they'd have better stats, they'd actually be more useful at this point, being just they come into your party higher level. And since I don't intend to really fight with anyone except Kosuke with the samurai, it wouldn't matter, you know, the stats would matter more than having my specific units, but it does kind of defeat the purpose if I'm using uh, Mega, the second samurai, who would be one of the top four highest level characters anyway in my list, and therefore have, you know, my created samurai and then the other samurai given to me, both using Katana, sure violates the it's my speed run i'm the only one who does it so it wasn't doesn't matter that much but definitely violates the uh, spirit of what i'm trying to accomplish here fairness again he's all the way up to 28 now sheesh this game managed to kill so he's up to 32 we should be okay this time especially uh the next to last one still could be dangerous because that Assassin just inflicts so much damage, but... Yeah, even these few levels make such a difference. I was taking six points of damage per swing before, now I'm only taking five. So just a couple levels gave enough vitality that I'm going to be able to survive, I think. It's still going to be really close. Okay, Kosuke is one of the last ones. Hilarious. Oh, well. All right, now if I get lucky enough to be able to restore most of my health, that'll make this even better. That is not looking good so far. Well, it's look like it's coming out to about even. Which isn't the best, but not the worst. Ooh, almost two full levels. I might actually route in killing Lizard Man back in Chronicle 6. That would give a lot of bonus experience to whoever I decide to have do that. a little bit of time there, not a big deal. But I can try that out on the next thing, and if it makes this, uh, if it makes this chronicle consistent, that would be worth the, uh, minute time it would take to kill him in that chronicle because I'd save about two minutes here if I don't have to worry about dying and having to restart 
because that always costs a couple minutes. It appear that getting my dancer up to about 48 is the real sweet spot. That is kind of interesting because, as I say, in any of my other categories, I've never really had to worry about an experience route. I haven't, I've, you know, just kind of messed around with it and gave it to lower level characters when I needed to, but the few things that are uh, extremely reliable that I know about the, uh, of who's going to take hits in this point is that I know that, uh, most of the time, my dancer takes most of the hits the way I have it set up, up to that middle section guy there, the fifth guy we fight. That's it. 311.18, not too bad. Not too far off of my regular any percent run now, about two minute, 10 minutes later. A little bit worse than my MCO, which again just really boils down to the consistency of having higher level guys hilariously. This is still better in the 16, 17 category for the most part. If I don't mess up 17 or 19, and especially not 20, that's an easy four or so more minutes I can cut off of this. Because I was pretty steady several minutes ahead all the way from Chronicle 6, where things went very well. If I kill a minute of that time to make Lizardman stronger, that could make potentially every... Killing Lizardman to make my guy stronger, that could make everything better. Emperor died. We'll go ahead and finish up, and then the I'll pack it in and for the holy blade bed. Disappeared into darkness. The empire collapsed, and the people were left only with devastated lands. Gotta see our final cutscene, and gotta see our final uh, super awesome the animatronic people, however, medieval statue. Eventually, forgot the hardships. They rebuilt the raised villages and sowed new seeds upon the destroyed fields. Then by the fireside, they told the tales, the tales of the great ones who moving hand their statue. Upon those so lands. awesome! That's how great a hero she is. Even her statues are capable of moving on their own. All right, thanks for watching. Turning this in here. Whoops, I'm saving the game. No, I'm not. The legend. Hopefully I'll be churning out some more over the next uh, week before we get to uh, No Holidays Allowed, where I'll be running this early Friday morning, my time. Take it easy, all and I will talk to you later.